I've been up the day, so I'm not much progress, but a couple of points. Uh, this piece of wood is now screwed to the supporting batten, which is against the wall. But at the front, the legs are not bedded into the ground. They're resting on the stones, which are just onto the soil. They've been there a long time, so those stones are well bedded into the soil. And my um, what, my understanding, no, my expectation is that that will be plenty of support um, for the time being. If things do go wrong, then I can easily wedge up the bottom to get it level. I've got these sheds here, and I have to do that with these uh, sheds. Just jet them up and level them up from time to time as uh, things move and sink. And it's not a problem. Okay, so we've got um, the piece across there, which forms the curve coming over here. It's going to need a little fillet in here, give it some support at some stage, and a little fillet in here, which you can make out of offcuts. And basically, I'm just cutting a fillet. You can see the lines on here. It will be like this one over here, which is already in place, to support the track around the curve. And that's where it's going to go, in that corner. And once it's in that corner, we will have enough support for the rail to curve around at the bottom right-hand end of the garden. And now I've got it running from the bottom of the garden, supported on some 4x4 four four fence posts, which are embedded into post crete uh, about a foot, 18 inches, into the ground. They're not terribly deep, but well tamped in, and then round onto the small, very small staging area, as it is at the moment, on that 17 plywood at the back. So that's today's work. Been out most of the day, as I said, so not much progress really, but I do now have the track curving round through a total of 90 degrees there, plus 90 degrees there, that's 180, so it's coming back on itself by the time it gets to this point here. It's pretty obvious really, but you can see I've marked a line on the top to show where the batten is underneath, and I've just screwed a batten on, which supports that fillet. Not rocket science, very straightforward, very, very simple, all done in situ with a biro by holding the wood up, very little measuring at all mostly done by holding it in place and marking. Another fairly obvious and simple tip, it's tantalised timber that's been kept outside which is damp and when cutting a long diagonal uh, saw cut you're not cutting across the grain very much, you're cutting partly down the grain. A little bit of oil on the saw helps a lot. I've got a, a coarser cut saw here rip cut, fast cut, whatever it is, and a fine cut saw here. In fact, it doesn't matter which you use, just take your time, don't force it, try and keep along the line, um, but the lubrication certainly helps to keep onto the line. The reason I'm using the fine cut one is I've hit a couple of nails or screws with this one, so the teeth are getting a bit damaged. They're under £10, you get them from £5 each, so uh, it's not a big loss. As you can see, this one's got some surface rust, a quick rub over with um, sandpaper would also help that cut through the wood much, much better. So that's it, a bit of lubrication on the saw for this damp, tantalised timber. So a batten cut to go across underneath the fillet, in this case it's about 36 inches long. It's supported by two of these 50mm decking screws at each end. Mark the line on the top so I know where to put the screws in. And then once that's in we add that triangular fillet piece 